Good morning. So our first lesson today is Algebra Lesson 1.1, Exploring Number Patterns. And so our essential question, yeah, every lesson will have an essential question that by the time we're done with the lesson, we should know the answer to this question. And it says, how can we use properties to explain patterns on the addition table? So we're going to explore various addition properties in Lesson 1.1. All right, so to unlock the problem, we need to know what a pattern is. So a pattern is an ordered set of numbers or objects. The order helps you predict what will come next. And we can use a, an, the addition table to explore patterns. So in today's activity, you're going to need orange and green crayons. So if you need to hit pause to gather your orange and green crayons, go ahead and do so now. And then hit um, play when you're ready to resume the recording. All right, so now that you have your supplies, look across each row and down each column. What pattern do we see? And so just as we go across each row and down each column, do you notice any patterns? 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. So do you notice any patterns there? Well, one that kind of stands out to me is that the numbers are increasing by 1. 1 is basically being added to each number. So go ahead and write that down. If you need more time, you can hit pause. And then resume the video when you're ready. Now using your orange crayon or marker, Shade the row and column for orange. Column orange for the atom zero. Compare the shaded squares to the yellow row and the blue column. What pattern do you see? So we're going to use the yellow row and the blue column as the atoms. And so I've already shaded mine orange. So in the first one, my atoms are zero plus zero and the sum is zero. 1 plus 0, I get a sum of 1. 2 plus 0, I get a sum of 2. 3 plus 0, I get a sum of 3. 4 plus 0, I get a sum of 4. 5 plus 0, a sum of 5. 6 plus 0, a sum of 6. 7 plus 0, a sum of 7. 8 plus 0, a sum of 8. 9 plus 0, a sum of 9. And 10 plus 0, a sum of 10. And then when I go across the other way, I'll notice, you should notice that it's exactly the same. This time, 0 plus 0, we still get 0. 1 plus 0, we get a sum of 1. 2 plus 0, a sum of 2. 3 plus 0, a sum of 3. 4 plus 0, a sum of 4. 5 plus 0, a sum of 5. 6 plus 0, a sum of 6. 7 plus 0, a sum of 7. 8 plus 0, a sum of 8, 9 plus 0, a sum of 9, and 10 plus 0, a sum of 10. So, what pattern do we see? Well, we notice that the numbers are the same. Going down the column as well as across, anything that was being added to 0 gave me the other number. And so that brings us to our first property that we need to know. And it says, what happens when you add 0 to a number? Well, when you add 0 to any number, the sum, the answer to an addition problem, is the same as the other number. And so that has a special name, and it's called the identity property of addition. And this is a property that you do need to know. It's something that you need to be able to recall and, and state. So the identity property of addition states that the sum of any number and 0 is that number. And the example they're giving is 7 plus 0 is 7. And I could use any example. I could say 9 plus 0. I could say 15 plus 0. I could say 8 plus 0. So any number plus 0 is the other number. All right, so now you're going to use your green marker or green crayon. And you're going to shade the pattern for the add end 1. Okay, and again, I've already shaded mine green, you notice that we have two that overlap, because 1 plus nothing is 1, 1 plus 1 is 2, 
1 plus 2 is 3. 1 plus 3, the sum is 4. 1 plus 4, the sum is 5. 1 plus 5, the sum is 6. 1 plus 7, the sum is, uh, 1 plus 6, the sum is 7. 1 plus 7, the sum is 8. 1 plus 8, the sum is 9. 1 plus 9, the sum is 10. And 1 plus 10, the sum is 11. And then we're going to have the same exact pattern going down the row. When we go 1 plus 0 is 1. 1 plus 1 is 2. 1 plus 2 is 3. And so on down the path. A call up. What pattern do we see? Well, it seems the numbers are in, the sums are in order from 1 to 11 in both directions. Going down, 1 plus the, the call, numbers in the blue column give me sums of, you know, in an order of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, as well as going across the row. So what happens when we add 1 to a number? Well, it's basically like counting, right? And, and so in that situation, you get, are going to get the next number. And the sum is going to be more, one more, than the other number. Okay, so if you need to hit pause, do so. Well, before we move on to page six. All right, so in activity two, in activity two it says shade all the sums of five orange. What patterns do you see? So we're going to look in the, the addition table and find all the sums of five. Five plus nothing is the sum of five. Four plus one is the sum of five. Three plus two is the sum of five. Two plus three is the sum of five. One plus four is a sum of five, and zero plus five is a sum of five. So, <clears throat> what is the pattern we notice? Is that all the numbers in that that have a sum of five are in a slant diagonally? And the sum of five is just is just an example, but if we look at above it, you notice that all the sums of four are also on a diagonal. The sums for six are all on a diagonal, and so on. So if we look through the whole table, we notice that if you look at the slants right to left, the sums are all the same. Okay, so Write two addition sentences for each sum of five. The first two are started for you. So five plus nothing clearly is a sum of five. And zero, if we add five to zero, we still get a sum of five. So looking at the table, you need to choose two more add-ins that will give you a sum of five. There's more than one correct uh, choices. So um, if I go 4 plus 1, I also notice that for 4 plus 1 gives me 5. If I go this way, 4 plus 1 also gives me 5. So 1 and add 4 more would be a sum of 5. If I go to the next one, I can see that 3 plus 2 is 5, or 2 plus 3 is 5. So it works both ways. 3 
plus 2 to the sum of 5, and 2 plus 3 to the sum of 5. What pattern do you see in these numbers? Well, each pair of sums has the same add-ins. They're just in different directions. Or different order. And so that leads us to our next property of addition, which states the commutative, commutative property of addition states that you can add two or more numbers in any order and get the same sum. In their example here, 3 plus 4 is a sum of 7. Or I can start with 4 and add 3 to it, and I would still get 7. But it doesn't matter which order I put the add-ins, I would still come up with the same sum. Okay, activity three. Shade a diagonal from left to right, orange. Start with a square for one. What pattern do you see? So it doesn't matter where you start, but start at a sum of one. Okay. And now we're just going to go diagonally all the way through the chart. Three, five. 7, 9, 11, 13, 15, 17, 19. <clears throat> what pattern do you see? Well, we should, you should be, should notice that all of these numbers are odd. And so it says, remember, even numbers end in 0, 2, 4, 6, or 8. Odd numbers end in 1, 3, 5, 7, or 9. So all the numbers in that diagonal are odd numbers. Shade a diagonal from left to right, green, and start with a square for 2. And what pattern? So left to right, green starting with 2. So 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, and 20. And what pattern do you see here? In that case, we see that all the sums are even. So now write addition sentences for the shaded boxes. Write even or odd under each add-in. All right, so. These, you might come up with different answers because uh, there's different ways of getting the sum of 6, right? So all of this, this diagonal here are all sums of 6. So it just depends on what you choose. Um, so I, here's an example. If I choose 4 and 2, I would then say that the add-in for 4 is even, the 2 is even and my sum is even but I could easily just have 5 plus 1 and then I would say those are odd so it does not matter which two numbers you which two add-ins you use just that they do equal 6 and that you indicate whether they're odd or even correctly all right so 7 
what are some ways of making seven? So we find the diagonal for seven and all of these add-ins. So I could say seven plus zero. I could say six plus one. I could say five plus two. I could say four plus three. And then the other ones would just be the same numbers but in the opposite direction. So in this case, let's, I'm going to say five plus two equals seven. And five is an odd add-in. Two is an even add-in, which gives me an odd sum. And for eight, for eight, I notice that eight plus nothing is eight. Seven plus one is eight. Six plus two is eight. Five plus three is eight. Four plus four is eight. Three plus five is eight, and so on. So you can use any of those numbers. And let's use, I'm going to use five plus three. Five is an odd. Add in three is also odd. And in this case, it gave us an even answer. So, <clears throat> Let's move on to our our practice. Complete the addition sentences. Sorry. Complete the addition sentences to show the commutative property of addition. And it says three plus what? Let me start this over here for you. Okay. So they're giving me that one of the add-ins is three, and the other add-in is four. So I know that I'm going to be using 3 and 4. So this is going to be 3 plus 4. And then over here, we're just going to switch the order because it says commutative property of addition. So the order in which I add two numbers will not change the sum. So we're going to use 4 plus 3 and 3 plus 4. If I start with 3 and add 4 to it, it gives me a sum of 7. If I start with 4, and add 3 to it, I get a sum of 7. Uh, the challenges we have with doing things from home with animals and stuff. Anyway. Number two, find the sum, then use the commutative property of addition to write the related addition sentence. So if we start with A and we add 5 to it, that would give me a sum of 13. The commutative property for 8 plus 5 is to start with 5 and add 8 to it, and that's still not going to change the sum, so I would still have a sum of 13. In the next case, if I start with 7 and add 9 to it, that would give me a sum of 16. The commutative property for 7 plus 9 change the order of the add-ins. And so in this case, we'd start with 9 and add 7 to it. That would give me a sum of 16. And the last one for number 4, if we start with 10, and add 4 to it, that would give us a sum of 14. The community property for that, change the orders of the add-ins. So in this case, let's start with 4 and add 10 to it, and that would give us a sum of 14. All right, is the sum even or odd? And we're just going to write even or odd. All right, so we start with 8, an even add-in, and we add 1, an odd add-in. We get an answer of 9, and 9 is odd. In number 6, we start with an odd number 3 and add 9, an odd add-in, <clears throat> which gives us a sum of 12, which is an even add-in. 
We start with an even add in number 7. Add an even add in. We get a sum of 12. And that also gives us even. So we start to notice a pattern that if I add an even and an odd add in, I'm going, to, I'm going to get a sum that's odd. If I add two odd add ins, I will get even. If I add two even add ins, I will also get a sum that's even. So that pattern will repeat itself. All right, look back at the shaded diagonals in activity two. Why does the orange diagonal show only odd numbers? So look at activity two. Why does the diagonal show only odd numbers? Zero plus one, one. One plus two, Odd. Two plus three, odd. So what are we noticing? We're no adding an adding odd and even number. So whenever you add odd and even numbers, you're going to come up with an odd answer. So Uh, the correct way to write this, let me think about this, let's see, for each sum So for each sum, one add-in is even and one add-in is odd. So the sums will also be odd. Find the sum of 15 plus nothing. Then write the name of the property that you use to find the sum. Well, we know that if you add 0 to any number, it is the, that number, 15. And we call that the identity property the identity property of addition okay. so <clears throat> the sum of 15 plus 0 is 15 and property that says that anytime you add 0 to any number you will get that we get the other number is the identity property of addition. Number 10. Select the number sentences that show the community property of addition and mark all that apply. All right, so what we're looking for is the same add ins on both sides of the equal sign, but in opposite order. So 27 plus 4 equals 31. That, that's just an addition problem and is giving me the answer of 27 plus 4. In B, I see 27 plus 4, and then I also see 4 plus 27. So those are exact same add-ins, but in opposite direction. So B is an example of the commutative property of addition. Okay. C, 27 plus nothing is the same as 0 plus 27. Well, those are the same add-ins on both sides in opposite order. So that is also the example of the commutative property of addition. In D, 27 plus 4 plus nothing equals 27 plus 4 plus nothing. So now while these two numbers, the two sides are grouped differently, they are not in different directions or different order. So D is not an example of commutative property just B and C. All right, so let's move on to page 8. And making sense 
making an argument. Does the argument make sense? Or does not make sense? That's an important part of mathematics is the ability to justify answers. Number 11, making arguments. Whose statement makes sense? Whose statement is nonsense? Explain your reasoning. So on the left, we have Joey who says that the sum of an odd number and an odd number is odd. And on the right, Kaylee says that the sum of an even number and an even number is even. And then they've shown their work. So in Joey's case, he says that adding 5 plus 7 will give him an odd answer. And to prove that, he put 5 blocks on the left, and he put 7 blocks on the right. And then he proceeded to circle pairs of 2s. And he says, I can circle pairs of tiles in each atom, and there is one left over in each atom, so the sum will be odd. Well, does that really make sense, though? Because shouldn't those two be paired together? So, and then... <clears throat> you'll have to write whether his statement makes sense or not, is nonsense. And so, basically, since these two add-ins that he says are left over, since they can be paired, there isn't anything left over. Everything has a pair of two. So his statement is nonsense. The extra tiles can be paired, so nothing is left over. In Kaylee's work, she put four here. She's put six here. Everything is in pairs of two. And so, yes, her answer would be even. So her Kaylee's statement makes sense. Okay. So Kaylee's statement makes sense because <clears throat> there are no leftover state uh, <laughs> leftover statements <laughs> leftover tiles. <clears throat> For the statement that is nonsense, Joey's statement, correct the statement. The sum. of an odd add-in and an odd add-in is even. Okay, so if you need to rewind any part of the video to continue your, to make sure you have the correct responses, do so. You will now be working on independent work in Go Math, Lesson 1.1. Use your book to help you. The questions in Go Math are basically the same type of problems that we just 
completed uh, with slightly different numbers. Um, so the book will help you do your independent work. If you have any questions, you uh, can stop the video and uh, ask questions. Or you can use the step-by-step -step examples in the program to help you with solving each problem. All right. Good luck. And tomorrow we will continue with 1.2.